Yeah, I mean, it's not a majority, majority pick. So, like, people can testify, and if there's no, like, if it's just a social thing. I mean, we have we have houses for different topics of discussion. Uh, but if if there's a law that is not really, you know, it's nice, like, what type of uh, size crop should it be, like, shit like that, then, yeah, testify, the t testimonial is good enough. And usually, if it's uh, if one can testify against it, and the majority of the, t the testifiers have agreed upon, it, and the majority of farmers have agreed upon it, and yeah, that can be a law. You don't need okay. scientists to look into that. So the, okay, so what I'm process is a bit different, obviously, for many different reasons. But okay, so what I'm getting here is, and again, correct me if I'm wrong. Something along the lines of in in on certain is issues, you know. It'll be what's empirically verifiable and we'll let the technocrats deal it. If it's something social and doesn't necessarily need to be dealt with through empirical validation, we'll let the see masses it, decide. See it as an actual court. See that like, like a big court we have today. It doesn't look like that, obviously. But look at this like that. Small cases, uh, they just usually come, they say the words, and then immediately the judge go, nah, nah, because the testimony is good enough. But in bigger cases, they well, have to well, hold on. Why is testimony only? And, why is testimony good enough in smaller cases and not? And why, why would you not imply the same standard of evidence for all cases? Can I say that two plus two equals four? Because it would be dystopic and useless for smaller issues. Meaning, oh my 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 fence is too close to my neighbors. All right, then let's see who's right. Let's look. At okay, side. well then, hold on. How do you make the yeah, distinction? Well, the, well, then questions arise from this. How do you make the distinction between what is a big versus a small case? But second off, if why with these two different standards, then, you know, how do you actually justify that? Because some people are going to that exist today. That's the thing that, that system exists today. What? Again, that that court system that we're talking about right now it exists today. The concept of, again, is my is my um, fence too close to my neighbor? I mean, first you hear uh the neighbor complained and then you hear it fend from oh. the uh how, man in the house and then you look at some papers saying all right well what's actual you know, law well yeah that's well that's the thing you can empirically verify whether or not my fence is too close to my neighbors because we have property deeds that should ideally have specifications drawn out of where certain property lines fall so no, i mean but, this, yes, is, this, is, so this is this is something i, I, I think Certain things doesn't fit into property lines, and the same thing would happen there. Usually, in most cases. Okay, well, such like, as what? Like, uh, my uh, the neighbor's dog box. I don't know. It's stupid small issues that today take that long to solve, and it wouldn't. We wouldn't need a mm -hmm. big goddamn technocratic system to solve those small issues. Everything well, doesn't always. things that are already covered by no. English common law, such as the concept of an easement, for example, where in order mm. to access a field, you have to walk across a little path that happens to cut through someone else's field. Are you allowed to do that? And obviously then the court system, which already exists, will be able to handle that. And we only build a little bit upon that. Otherwise, we like that system a lot. Great. Yeah, like it's, it's something that... Um, it's been covered in sort of libertarian law a million times over as well in the sense that yeah. you know you kind of look at it and you say okay um if someone crosses across your field because they have to do that in order to get to their own one do you, are you entitled to then nuke that person <laughs> right <laughs> and obviously obviously yeah, the answer to that question case. is no exactly so obviously the answer to that question is no you should, they should be given an easement and so this is one of those things where i think courts are often cover a lot of these these questions that people ask already yeah. Okay, but like, uh, like the point I was making before, there are cases for these easements. I don't deny that. My problem is that it's not consistent. Again, it's, uh, it's like entirely. There's no consistent system like libertarian deontology, or you know, Aristotelian virtue ethics that say these easements are okay because X, Y, and Z, and because of certain reasons. It's just sort of like again, it's sort of up to the whim of the judge because again, you have systems that like you know certain judges will make easements for these things all the time but not for these things and it seems so much more utterly subjective than any other system that i've even the libertarian sort of deontology that we're dealing with it seems so much more up to the whim of the people who are hearing and then interpreting the testimony no, there's still law and constitutions in place but why should i care what a paper says 
and then follow natural law as well which is you're, you're jumping the gun val um no but all right there's laws in place but what are the if those laws like you're saying are just testimony or are themselves just well, based on seriously verifiable facts like yeah what, the, more, what more do you want well how do you get from the is to the odd how do you get from okay this is the facts to this is what we should do how do you bridge the is odd gap how, how do you bridge how do you get law is that what you're asking how do we get law yeah, like, because in one sense, like, I get how you can take testimony, quote unquote, and make it into the laws, because it presumably the testimony isn't really necessarily empirical. It's all normative, which is why I don't kind of get the double standard. In one sense, you want the empiricism, but in the other sense, what you just have is, uh, you know, normative claims of the townsfolk in these other cases. Mm, so, like, they don't, they don't influence law. In that way they can testify but they well, themselves... well, they, well they would if they if they testified and you know somebody and some judge makes a rule on whether or not you know somebody's dogs can bark past this hour of the night and what you have to do about the dog if it does bark at past this hour of the night that becomes the law of the land does it not yes sure okay so then it is based on like the normative whims of the townsfolk essentially at least in these smaller cases yeah, in smaller cases, yeah, I guess. Or uh, small villages can have a have you know, as it is today as well. Small villages have a little meet up and they talk about. Uh, yeah, sure. Law. No, I, I I get that. Fair <laughs> enough. But I'm also asking. But then you know why uh, this wouldn't, this would not go all the way up though. This would be covered by one institution. Okay, but then in one case, why are you willing to take the normative talk of the townsfolk? in one case and require like the empirical verification of another and then once you have it's empirical verification how do you how do you make a no a law with normative backing like how do you make normative prescriptions based on facts again you asked me how to make a law for a dog a neighbor's dog barking in comparison well to no we, we we know we like if like you're saying you're saying, like, if we have a case where it's like, oh, this, uh, let's use your example of the company polluting. All right, this company is, it's subjectively verifiable, like, through all these different tests and medical studies that the chemicals they're releasing into the water from, like, their mining process or something are having bad effects on the people living downriver or something. Like, why would you then say that, okay, that means we should stop. Why shouldn't it be, oh no, the mine is providing us with cheaper all around goods, therefore we should let it continue doing with its gooding. How do you get no. from, how do you, you get should, to you the, should. hold on, hold on. How do you get to the normative claim that imposing cost on these people in this instance is wrong from the fact that a cost is being imposed? Because to make a complaint, again, there's a big difference between your, bar, your dog barking, the like neighbor's dog, dog parking and a fact like a factory because it's yeah no but i know it's different uh, institutions there are different no, I, institutions for all of this different things different houses which covers different things the more uh, nationwide so when you can't cover sovereignty and nationwide houses will obviously not be able to have normative law in it I guess. no no, no I, I get that but you're not even that's not even the question i'm asking anymore i'm on something different what i'm saying is we know for fact that this factory is harming these people uh, downwind or downstream. Why should we care in your system? Why does that mean we ought not to harm them? How do you get the ought of we ought not harm them from the fact that harm is being done to them? You're asking me how, how, how... I'm asking you how you get an ought from an is, which is what your system is entirely dependent upon. The art not damaged, therefore. Like, no, I got against it. The people for getting damaged by the pollution or the company. No, no, no. I get they ought not be damaged. What is your justification for making that statement though? Why should why ought they not be damaged? It's called uh, I forgot the word in my head. We have we have an answer for it, by the way. Reciprocity? Yes, reciprocity. Okay, why ought things be reciprocal in the first place? I ought anything be. <laughs> well, there's reasons. I could say for specifically that it is uh, like God, Logos, has, like if I were a divine command theorist, and I'm not, but just for the 
uh, ease of the conversation. If I were a divine command theorist, I could say, well, it ought be this way because God said it ought be this way. There's mm-hmm. more. There's obviously more to that, but I could say, I mean, like, this is my metaphysical claim that makes it so. How? What is your metaphysical I, say that okay, harm is I, harm I, is I, I understand. I understand. I, understand. Uh, I, I fully understand you now. All right. So. Can I just interject that for a second? Could it be, is your answer going to be behavioral economics, basically? That we know that people behave in specific ways and that humans like to have reciprocal relationships. And then if yeah. you don't have that, the entire society breaks down, and then you don't have a civilization anymore because everyone will be having a war of all against all instead of actually collaborating with each other exactly. on shared goals. So if you come yeah, out and say, okay, well, well let's not have collaboration. Yes. I can just like, I can just, I can just, you know, sort of pipe toxic chemicals into my neighbor's backyard. You're not going to have a high trust society when you do that and then soon from then you won't have a society at all okay well uh, then I, suppose you're right. I think you're asking how do we know something's bad well yeah. well no I mean, like the, 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 prove it. The, well the, the, the question you like i get that what is bad basically what is no. evil we use naturalism which is empiricism more or less and therefore you um, how do you how do you empirically <laughs> prove evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, therefore, you get something like it, which is understandable. No, 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 no. Well. It's not that we don't like it. Empirically, prove evil to me now. Like, go, go, do it. Empirically, prove evil to me. Prove me yeah. numbers right now. No, 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 no. Oh. Not even that. Like you're saying, I get the idea of war against all against all, and we as humans don't like that. Tell me why that's bad, though. The reason why that's bad is because if we have a goal, which is to become stronger as a group and to be able to influence uh, others why should I care about politically, then if you engage well, in undermining everyone else around you and saying that, okay, we're just going to have no laws at all that govern um, reciprocity, well, man, that's not then the you're not going to have a very powerful society by the time you're done. You'll, you'll not have developed anything. And we've seen what societies who, who behave, which behave that way, look like, and they haven't turned out very well. So empirically speaking, we can say that high trust is better than low trust. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Why should I, why should I want a high trust society? Make the case that a high trust, yeah. like, why should I want that? What is your moral claim for me wanting that? Well, like, I get we all, yeah, I get we all assume yeah. that we want that. Are you Isn't it because it produces better material outcomes and you have a greater development of productive forces? Why should what I care better? about greater material outcomes? This is Socrates and Derrida. No, you can go on and on and on forever until you're asking, what's the, why am I alive? 